This is not the update I wanted to give you on my copper banded butterfly. However, after three years, sadly it has passed away and on social media, it is often all too easy to only show the good things and not show the bad things. But I think that with a fish like a copper banded butterfly, there is real value in sharing the bad news as well as the good. So today I'm gonna to tell you what happened to him, uh, what I did wrong and why, uh, what you can take away from this. So I'd had the fish for about three years and I did an update on my tank recently in which I showed the fish and I said that whilst he'd never put on the weight I wanted him to, he seemed to be okay. However, a few people commented in the, in the, in the comments to say that he was looking thin and you were absolutely right. Uh, and it turned out that he was basically on his last legs. Um, so he passed away uh, today. This is actually, I'm recording it half an hour after, after he died. And uh, whilst I don't know exactly what caused it, it was malnutrition. Basically, I don't know how we got to that stage, but it was malnutrition that caused it. I wasn't meeting his feeding requirements, basically. Um, so there's a couple of things with that. Uh, firstly, uh, it might have been that he had internal parasites, so worms eating the food that he was eating, but it's probably more likely, I would say, that I just wasn't meeting his nutritional needs. So I'd had him for three years. When I first got him, I was feeding about 12 cubes of frozen food to my tank per day, which is it's only a four foot by two foot tank, so that's a lot of food. And that got him eating, and it got him to the point where he was looking all right. Um, I backed that off uh, uh, over time when I managed to get him eating just frozen mysis and I ended up for the last, I don't know, year or so, I've been feeding three cubes of frozen mysis per day. Uh, and that has kept him going. He's always been going for food. He always is out in the water column eating it. He doesn't have any problem competing. But in the last couple of days, I did notice that he was a lot more picky. Uh, I had started to increase the feeding after the video in which I showed he was skinny. I made a little copper band feeder for him that I couldn't get him interested in. Um, and I tried to feed more food to the tank in the hope that I might be able to put some weight back on, but I hadn't realized quite how far down the line he was. And really that was closing the gate after the horse was bolted. Um, the other thing to do with feeding is that I think there are other ways that I could have uh, done more to, to, to meet his dietary requirements, essentially. Um, whilst I was feeding three cubes of, of food per day, that probably wasn't enough. And I probably needed to be doing more things like feeding a more, a more varied diet specifically for him and taking care to make sure he gets the food. Copper bands just aren't um, uh, competitive eaters. So even though he was eating for three years, that wasn't enough. And even when I had him, when he was looking okay, he was never looking fat and healthy. He was never looking as fat as I wanted him to. So I should have been doing more uh, to care for him. And what you can take away from this is that they really are, for a start, they're extremely difficult to get eating in the first place. But even when you've got them eating, they're also very, very difficult to keep eating. And more to the point, you have to take specific steps to make sure they are getting enough food. So I think I should have uh, spent more time trying to get him to eat from the uh, copper band feeder that I made. He did eat from that at first, but then I made a different one and he just never took to it. But I should have spent more time training him to do that so I could directly feed him and give him more food without it going to all the other fish in my tank. Um, I also noticed towards the end, uh, what I used to do was I used to take away my algae magnet and it's not a floating mag algae magnet, it's a tunsy magnet. And when I did that, it would just drop on the side and there would always be amphipods and copepods. The second I did that, he'd come over and hoover up the natural microfauna in the tank, give himself a nice little meal. But what I noticed over the last few months or so was that every time I took the tunsy magnet away, there was less and less there were fewer and fewer copepods and amphipods in uh, the, the algae magnet. And I, I found, probably as often as not, when I took the algae magnet away, that there was nothing there. So it might be that over time he just decimated the natural population. It might be actually, I had other fish that ate uh, amphipods and copepods as well. So maybe I had too many fish in there that compete with him. But basically, the overall message that I want to tell you about is that they are very, very difficult to, uh, to feed. Uh, everybody says this, don't they? Um, but you really shouldn't underestimate them. And if you do get one, you need to make specific arrangements specifically to feed that one fish, not just feed your entire tank, but to feed that one fish. Will I get another one? Ugh. I don't know. Look, never say never. Um, at the moment, I feel quite raw because it's upsetting losing a fish that you cared for, especially one that you know is difficult to keep and you know you shouldn't get, but you go ahead anyway. So at the moment, if I had to answer that question, I'd say no. 
and also because I actually ended up feeding more to my tank than I wanted to just because of that fish. And that's potentially to the detriment of my corals and part of the reason my nutrients are too high. So I don't think I will do. However, if I ever were to do, uh, were to get another one, I would make sure I was feeding him specifically, not just broadcast feeding the tank like I do with all my other fish, but making specific provisions for him so he can get the most food and the best food that he needs, a broad variety, worms, clams, mussels, all these sorts of things, the food they need specifically for him. And if I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna take all of those steps to make sure I'm meeting his care needs. And if you're not prepared to do that, it's frankly, it's not fair on the fish. And I wasn't prepared to do that. And I've learned that lesson that it's not fair to do it because they're not just gonna get by on their own. And this is a story that I've seen time and time again. Uh, they do okay for a period of time. Three years isn't bad going. I'll double check that uh, and I'll tell you if I got that wrong. But three years isn't bad going. But nonetheless, it should live, a, should live a lot longer. I think their life expectancy in the wild is about 12 years. So it should live a lot longer. That's not a good life uh, for the copper banded butterfly. And what I'm really telling you from this video is if you really, really must get one, then you absolutely need to make sure you're prepared long term over the course of a decade <laughs> to make specific provisions to feed this one fish. They're never going to get to the stage whereby you can just drop a few cubes of frozen in the tank and they'll be okay. Now I don't think there's much else to say on the video. Really the point of making this was one, to round it off for people who follow my tank so you know what happened, and two, to underline the point that we already know, copper band butterflies are very difficult to, uh, to keep. If I've got any questions, do let me know in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next time. And until then, happy reefing.